Mid-July, and it's boom or bust time for John Burton Race and his family. They'd hoped that forging a new life in an idyllic seaside town in Devon would bring them closer together. But the cracks are already beginning to show. I've just walked out of the restaurant, I don't care. I can't bother to... One, you overspent. And two, you never told me to calculate 30% more than it was going to cost. Did you? I did. You didn't? You did not? That's ridiculous. The summer season is now in full swing, and even though the punters are flooding into their new restaurant, it's not enough. We've got to maximise the covers. We've got to get some money and cash flow behind us to take the bad times that are coming. It's mid-July, just as the restaurant enters its busiest time of year. School holidays have started for the Burton Race Clan. Right now, six children running amok isn't exactly what John and Kim need. Some things have never changed, you know. Chocolate, you open chocolate, the fridge, chocolate fringe, chocolate there's chocolate milk, there's cheese slices. I thought we got out of that in France. The little one's obsession for anything made of chocolate seems to have returned with a vengeance. We can have chocolate spread sandwiches. Chocolate spread? What do you mean? Uh, well, we might not have any of that because we had that yesterday. And if there is any in here, I'm feeling it. Where is it? They're just running wild now, Kim. I mean, I know we haven't got a lot of time, but also... Yeah, but who puts it in the trolley? You. You put the cheese in the trolley. Sorry, it is you. Right, now we know. <laughs> <laughs> the older girls, Martha, Olivia and Eve, have outgrown chocolate and become addicted to something much more dangerous. Recently, they invited boys into the house and John and Kim weren't very happy about it at all. You really, really behaved badly. You know that we wouldn't have allowed boys to stay over. It wasn't me inviting them, though. I did take some of the blame, but it was... Well, no, I'd like you to take a lot of the blame, because you just sort of should have said... I did say. I said it to Eve and she said, no, no, it'll be fine, keep it a secret, won't tell her. And then she took a photo. But I find out everything. OK. You know I do. Well, first of all, I mean, I don't think you're going to have any more going out in the evening during the school holidays. And I'll have to think on a suitable punishment. What? <laughs> That's enough of a punishment. Well, I don't think it is, Olivia. I mean, anything could have happened. Good. To take some pressure off Kim, Grandma Patsy has come to the rescue and whisked the older girls off for a week in a South Coast holiday camp. Can we not go in the horses? Can we go in the little cart thing? No, we're going in the horses. I can't go in the horses. I love the carousel. The aim? To distract them from their new obsession with all things male. We naughty girls. No, it was Eve. Yeah, it was all Eve. We blame it all on Eve. Martha's taken absolutely none of the blame, says it was nothing to do with her. But there are several pictures of Martha, I believe, with boys. Yeah, but there's a lot of fit boys in Devon. <laughs> they were like surfers or skaters, just like, hello. <laughs> Poor Olivia keeps saying, have you decided what my punishment is? No, I'm still thinking. No, I got she like... went off with her boyfriend the no, whole I night, didn't. and I... I was left on my own with some weirdo. I didn't. She did. She went off with I her didn't. boyfriend the whole night. I didn't. You did. I didn't. You How didn't. would you know? You weren't even. Really... Well, How was I know? Taxi. All right, on this one. Well, that's me. Taxi. Taxi's been given strict instructions to keep the girls on a short leash. It's proving more challenging than she'd ever imagined. They all went on. But some things are way beyond the call of duty. <laughs> Whilst the children enjoy the freedom of the summer holidays, for John, they mean just one thing. 
with money. And if he fails to cash in on this golden opportunity to make some, the restaurant could face a very cruel winter indeed. I had warning telephone calls from the bank. The wage roll is £4,800 a week now, and it's a lot of money. And any business, if the wages go over 30% of your uh, turnover, you, you start to get in trouble. Problems present themselves all the time, you have to be there for it, and you have to watch it, otherwise you'll lose everything that you, want, you started with, you know. In line with the expected increase in summer trade, this week the bank will expect the new angel to take in excess of 24 grand. Otherwise, John's in deep trouble. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hey, you all right? Good. Can I um, have a few words? Yep. The unrelenting workload is already pushing the restaurant staff to their okay. limits, the and John summer, wants more. Is, um, we really need to change the menu. And, um, what I want to see is a bit of colour on the plate, and let's start using the stuff that's just coming into season, you know. Uh, in the pastry, we need to see the red fruits, raspberries, yep. strawberries, stuff that we can buy in season that are cheap. Mm -hmm. So if you start talking to the supplier, start getting a summer menu on, OK? Cool. No that's problem. That's great, then. Okay, no problem. Fantastic. John's not just turning the thumb screws on his chefs. Before the summer onslaught really kicks in, as chief in charge of the restaurant's refurbishment and decor, Kim's been called to account to sort out all its teething problems. Already things are dropping off the wall, you know, you see fire extinguisher, you know, the place needs painting again, see? Right, John's yeah. list of bodged jobs has been growing daily. When it rains, it's like a waterfall here. Even though we paid for new guttering and, and a new vent on the top of the roof, if, because the door opens in, inward, you get a line of blokes all lined up peeing against the wall in the urinals. Mm. It's a bit off-putting. And then the health inspector said, well, whoever did this, no can do, it's got to be redone. Whoever did that, you've got to be joking, it's got to be redone. So already we're into £7,000. £7,000, we haven't even been open more, and we haven't been open three months. Yeah, but you're always going to get things that you have to add. I mean... Yeah, but come on, it's got to be earned. How many dinners does it take to make pay for 7,000 quid? Yes, but... John's decided enough is enough. Nice but. The final bill for the building work has arrived, and with money tight, he's determined not to pay it. I'm not letting any more money go until, one, you know, I get the job done properly, and two, um, to the right standard. Because you haven't budgeted to replace everything after three months. John, whenever you set a budget, you mm. always work on going a third over the budget. So, I mean, no, you're you very know, lucky. I, no, I don't. Well, That's why we're in the you-know-what. Because, one, you overspent, <laughs> and, two, you never told me to calculate 30% more than, you, that, than it was going to cost. Did you? I did. You didn't. You did not. That's ridiculous. No one would. What, what, what the hell's that all about? <laughs> There he goes, ranting off. <laughs> For the time being, at least, money worries are being put on ice. Today, it's Eliza's ninth birthday, and the girls have arrived back from their holiday in time to celebrate it. I don't remember you. Are you my long-lost cousin or something? Your yeah. long-lost cousin. <laughs> Charles. Hello, brother and sister. Nice to see each other. Hello. Hello. Oh, Jimmy, don't do that. That's horrible. Oh, Charles, let's go. Millie. John's taking the opportunity to start weaning the younger kids off their addiction to junk food. On today's birthday menu is smoked cod with samphire and spicy lamb kebabs. Only real chefs can do this, so don't know if you're a real chef. Piece of lamb, then a piece of pepper. Right, go on, you see if you can do it now. This is disgusting. I know. It's disgusting. Delish. Oh, no, 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 Don't squeeze it too tight so that the flames can get in between, right? Just can't get the help. As the littlies perfect their kebab making, Olivia's punishment for her part in Boygate has begun. Yeah. You've got yoghurt in here. Yoghurt? Yeah, cumin, you know, like curry. Can I 
and coriander. You just brush that on. Okay. Let's put some on. Dad, chose the smiley one. And that smoking of the wood chips will smoke the cod. Okay. Oh. You can put mackerel on it. Smoke trout, haddock, <laughs> anything. Could you smoke a shark? You could smoke a shark. <gasps> No, oh no, thanks. Whoa. I'll hold them. No. Wait, no, you'll let go of them. Hold on, let me just put them Mommy, on here first. How come you get two e? Right. I just. Oh, you. <laughs> I didn't drop them, Mum. Kim. It wasn't me, Amelia. I didn't do it. I lost all the blues. Yeah. It's up to John's healthy feast to reinflate the party spirit. No. But will it impress his hardest critics, the junk food junkies? Remember what I said, you don't like something, that's perfectly fine. Daddy, but you try it first, and then... Daddy, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Mommy! Can I try it? Yes, Amelia. I don't like it. <laughs> at least they can fill up on an unhealthy dessert. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. Happy birthday, Eliza. Mommy, mate. Mommy! Olivia's knuckling down and accepting the punishment for her role in Boygate. But when Kim attempted to clip Eve's wings, Eve went ballistic and has run off to her boyfriends in Reading. God, don't they drive you mad, parents? I can understand when people say, I hate my parents. I'm like, I can understand that. They drive me bonkers. You just want to go, bloody hell, just leave me alone. <laughs> Eve has found it difficult to settle into the Devon life. She has resigned from her job at the restaurant six times. And last week, she failed her driving test. Eve, you're not in first, you're in fourth! I'm not. I'm in second. You're not! <laughs> her escape to Reading is creating unrest not just at home, but in the restaurant as well. She knows we're fully booked and more all weekend long. She knew she had other obligations and commitments. She knew it was Eliza's birthday, and when the push came to shove, she didn't actually give a damn. I've just walked out of the restaurant. I don't care. I can't be bothered. I'm not working there anymore. Young teenage girls are borderline mental. That, that, and that's, a, that's, that's the truth. There's no rhyme or reason. Today sees the launch of the restaurant's summer tourist menu, and if John's going to meet this week's 24 grand target, it's vital they've got it right. The menu consists of light, colourful, and most importantly, inexpensive local fare. But with 31 other restaurants in Dartmouth, John's new dishes need to stop the holiday makers in their tracks and lure them into his establishment. It's a promising start. A busy Saturday night has previously meant 64 diners, but by seating an early bird crowd that will be out by nine, tonight the kitchen will attempt to cater for a record 91 people. This should give John's coffers a head start. Come here, one person every two and a half minutes. Shut sure. right. Oh, good. The big table, get ready. Yeah. The revamped summer menu includes lime court turbot and steamed sea bass, and they're going down a storm. Right, get ready, please. It's four turbot, two bass, and a medium uh, rare beef. Yay! Eight colours, Robert. But with the influx of tourists pushing numbers to record levels, it's certainly no holiday for the chefs. No, there's no buzz, really. You don't wake up in the morning thinking, well, hey, I'm going to work. Well, you know? Hey, hey, that's what I do. As he does, yeah, as a nutcase in the corner does. No, you, you wake up and you're like, oh, God, I've only had five hours kit. You know, I've got to go to work again and do it all over again. By one o'clock, all 91 customers have left satisfied. But for the exhausted brigade, the endurance test is not over yet. All I want to do is go and have something to eat. <laughs> I get so hungry after service. But it has to be done, so you get on with it. Thank you. 
7.30 a.m. and John's already back on site, bending his front of house manager's ear with John. more money-making schemes. Uh, John. Yes, with the wine. In the restaurant business, okay. alcohol sales are a surefire way to make cash, and John is concerned his expensive wine list is scaring some customers away. If you go down the list, right, nothing's cheaper than 17.50 a bottle. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic at the moment where we've got the tourist trade, mm -hmm. but for the local people, we need something that's about £14 a bottle. John's confident that cheaper wine will dramatically improve their alcohol sales, a relatively effortless way to improve his profits. And there are people out there that don't drink alcohol. Absolutely no good for the business at all. And if everyone was a teetotaler in here, I'd be bankrupt in a week. That's how important a wine list is. Look at the amount of effort it takes to produce three plates, how many chefs, how much work, how much labour force there is to produce three dishes for 30 quid. How long did it take him to pull the cook and pour the wine? And you might get the same return in minutes. Sourcing great quality wine and food at the right price is an ongoing headache. I'm already on my third vegetable supplier. First couple of deliveries, fantastic, and then they start being silly. You know, the, the old trick about the small jam strawberries in the bottom of the punnets, which are all mouldy, and then three or four lovely ones on top. Remember, when you're buying anything, you're actually buying it to use all of it. You haven't costed to chuck half of them away, because if you do, it's twice the price, isn't it? John's supply problems aren't just a niggling annoyance. They've been making a serious impact on his profits. And even on his days off, his resolve to find reliable and exciting local produce doesn't waver. Today, he's taking the kids to a nearby orchard to help pick fruit from a promising new supplier. Well, there's some there, there. The celebrated Dittisham plum is found in only one village in Britain, and it's famed for its rich flavour and golden yellow flesh. Dad, is this one okay? Yeah, good. I love Dad! It. Have you tasted it, Millie? Don't, like, don't them. like them. You don't like them? Look, listen, what is it with you, that? You don't like anything. John wants to collect a sample to try out a recipe for his new summer menu. Look, that's it. You sure you don't want to try one? Come on. Ooh, yuck. I almost died. It doesn't take Charles long to find a more entertaining use for the famous Dittisham plum. No more, Charles, please. If she sees it. <laughs> Charles. Mm. Oh, good. Did you get them? Then there's one. Well, pick them up then. You can make plum pie. Plum jam. That's a good one. Plum sauce. How do you make plum jam? Daddy. Just mush them up. Daddy! Charles, Charles. Put some of this. Next stop is the restaurant to try out the new plum recipe on his unsuspecting children. Mm. Come on, Charles. Probably, wobbly. He's hoping that Dittish and Plum ice cream will be a crowd pleaser. I'll show you how to make a plum beautiful classic plum cream and plum ice cream. One pound to make an ice It's cream. Monday, and as the restaurant's closed, John's chefs right. are on a well-deserved day off, an ideal opportunity to train up a new recruit. Okay. You said you'll bruise them, remember? Cold water, cold water. You said you'll bruise them, remember? That's right, you're right, chef, you're right, chef. Right, go on, all of it. Right, now shake it like this. Yeah. You try. Shake it. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, Probably okay. enough. Right. In the fire yeah, room. turn that one on. Let's go make the ice cream. Come on. Let's get the ice cream done. Do -do -do -do. Yeah, you go and get the eggs. <laughs> and don't drop them. I will. Don't drop them. And you half and half and half and half, half and half, half and half. half, and half. Uh, the horrible slimy stuff in there. That's egg white, not slimy stuff. Dad, you got some shell back. Yeah. Sorry, chef. If you pour this boiling whipped cream into here now, mm. it'll scramble all the eggs and cook them all, and it'll be ruined. Right? Scrambled eggs. Scr yeah, it will be scrambled eggs, but it won't set. The ice cream will never set if you do that. And then we pour this... Into that. Into that. Right, now we've got to pour yeah, it into the machine, right? Get the Ready? ice cream done! Dun -dun -dun -dun. And it goes... Now I'm going to add the, um, the plums. This has got to go to the fridge to set. Plum ripple ice cream. Plum ripple. Is it ripple. Delish? 
Right, guys, ice cream time. I'll get mine at the king. Now for the ultimate consumer <laughs> test. If his fussy kids like the plum ripple ice cream, he's on to a surefire winner. It's real food and it's plum ripple. Here we are. Go on, lick, yeah, but lick it then. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you something. They're a pound each. John's finally succeeded in getting his kids to enjoy something other than chocolate. But at home, Kim's still struggling with mopey teenager Olivia. Olivia, why don't you go and get a job? <laughs> because I don't want you sitting around the whole holiday doing nothing. Why can't you help me? Oh, oh better still, why don't you go and help in the restaurant? Olivia? Yeah, I, I did the ironing earlier. Oh, and why did you have to do the ironing? I'm punished. No, you're in the process of being punished. With eldest daughter Eve still AWOL in Reading, there's a job vacancy at the New Angel. In a bid for freedom, Olivia's decided to take Eve's place in the restaurant tonight. I'm scared I'm going to get something wrong. Oh, well. <laughs> right, get ready, guys. <laughs> Olivia will have her work cut out for her. The restaurant is insanely busy, and both front of house and kitchen are working flat out. The numbers will go up and up and up and up. And, uh, you know, when John comes in, he's like, right, we're going to get mullered, we're going to get mullered, here we go, here we go. He's just like, look at each other, yeah, right, OK, you know. Turbo Deli on. Hi, hi. The limitations of keeping the menu seasonal, local, and of the very best quality are beginning to show. The steamed sea bass is just too popular. We're getting completely mullered on the fish. But amidst the mayhem, Olivia is slowly finding her feet. It's fully booked, and they're turning people away. But John's still not happy. People have been coming in off the street trying to get in and pretending that they've booked tables, but they haven't. Uh, um, I don't like seeing money walk away, actually. So I've lost about uh, 10 customers, which we can't fit in the place. It's been a hard night, but punishment is definitely paying off for Olivia. No, I'd like to stay again, but you know, at the end of the evening, you're like, why did I do it? Why did I do it? And then you get the money and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, she's great. By the week's end, even John's found something to smile about. With a little help from cash-happy tourists, the restaurant has hit the bank's target for the first time since it opened. There are people that will spend the money, that appreciate their wines, that have the money. This table here... ..spent a fortune. Absolute fortune. £110, £165, two bottles at £95. We cooked for eight, that was like cooking for 20. That's good, I like it. Money makes the world go right. Packing the punters in like sardines might be keeping the bank manager happy, but the customers are starting to bite back. You are going to get forcibly removed if you don't off. I want you And the cooking continues next Thursday at 8.30. Back to tonight, Corinne Redgrave helps to reenact the trial of the King Killers, part of the aftermath of the English Civil War. <laughs>